What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of For Never News! The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related. And we don't bore you, we get into it. Let's do it! Still moving on, still moving on. This is for my day ones. This is for my day ones. Come on. And of course, before we continue, in case you don't know, I got an album out right now, The Rise of Tim Roosevelt, but even more than just that, because I'll have it linked in the description below, I got now a website dedicated strictly to my music, and you can go right now and pre-order two things that I have coming. For starters, I got a deluxe edition, an extended edition of The Rise of Tim Roosevelt album that is coming out on vinyl. You can pre-order it right now. There is no exact release date yet for it, but if you pre-order it, you are guaranteed to get a copy of The Rise on vinyl, and it's extended because it will have additional records, additional verses, some features that I think will be of interest to some people, so definitely have that. But also, we have the EP that I've been working on since the rise finished called he rose get it the rise and once we rose you know he rose that project is also up for pre-order digital only and in case you can't see it here on the screen the cover art was indeed designed by nicholas draper ivy the artist behind the reboot the revitalization of static shocks comics so yeah pretty big and awesome exciting stuff to come more details in the future but check out the website go click the link uh pre-order right now the heroes digital ep and also the rise on vinyl extended edition again i don't think you'll be disappointed but also also if you pre-order the heroes ep right now you get an exclusive comic physical that will be coming to you as well it is a pretty interesting comic that i had done by my guy siobhan white i wrote it he drew it and yeah a lot of stuff coming check out the website timroosevelt.com but onward to the stories shall we because for starters we have a very very odd story i guess you would say the story kind of threw me for a loop a mangaka was so traumatized by reading some of the recent stuff in jujutsu kaisen i gotta imagine this maybe was over the last two to three weeks somewhere around that ballpark where a certain uh, character seemingly has bit the big one but yeah this author was so traumatized that they went on hiatus with their comic yeah uh, l l let's read it exactly fly me to the moon manga goes on hiatus after shocking jujutsu kaisen chapter and when you initially read the headline like when i did and i didn't have any context i'm like wait a minute is this the same mangaka like is gegaku tami moonlighting as an author that does fly me to the moon because why would you go on hiatus because another manga did some shocking things this year's 46th issue of shogakugan's weekly shonen sunday magazine revealed on Wednesday that Kenjiro Hata's Fly Me to the Moon manga is going on hiatus until the 50th issue. The magazine claimed the manga artist was recovering from the shocking chapter 236 of Jujutsu Kaisen. Now we won't mention what shocking event was but if you know it was shocking that some fans have been building shrines in response including spoilers along with some other strong reactions. Hata launched Fly Me to the Moon manga in Shogakugan's weekly Shonen Sunday magazine in February 2018 Shogakugan published the manga's 25th compiled book volume on September 15th and Viz is releasing the manga in English and I'll be honest with you when I read this initially there's a couple of different things that come to my mind I think okay for starters maybe this manga ka is a very big Jujutsu Kaisen fan and was absolutely flabbergasted of what just happened because uh, admittedly majority of the Jujutsu Kaisen fandom is still right now reeling in agony over no way <laughs> Gage Akutami really didn't just do that Shueisha really didn't just allow all of this to transpire. What 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 were we doing here, folks? But there's also a little bit of a cynic within me that is saying, wait a minute. Why is from an entirely different publishing company altogether, Shogakugan, why is a mangaka from a whole different sector speaking out about a Shueisha title about Jujutsu Kaisen? And again, you know, it could be the, just, you know, the author wanted to do what they wanted to do. But I always look at it like, okay, these publishing companies, these, you know, magazines, all of them, there, there are some strict limitations. Like, I'd imagine they don't want you, you know, hyping up what's going on in another publication's manga because it's like, yo, what are you doing? We <laughs> 
like we got like 50 other series here that you could uh, be traumatized and talk about it so initially i think at the same time while yeah we were all shocked and this is kind of crazy and maybe i don't want to say humorous but definitely it's something there as to yo this mangaka is going on hiatus because a jujutsu kaisen chapter or it could be that uh, it's a pretty good promotional tool to get your name in the headlines of other areas that normally because again i've never even heard of fly me to the moon and if i have maybe it was just like talking the top 50 selling manga of the week thing and i don't remember but i've never really talked about it so now you just put out to all jujutsu kaisen fans that you know it's a manga that sells millions of copies every freaking volume oh hey there's a manga called fly me to the moon and the author is a big jujutsu kaisen fan and right there there's going to be a lot of impressionable people that are going to be like wow this author is a fan of Jujutsu Kaisen openly as well what is this called again fly me to the moon I might just check that bad boy out you gotta have you know you gotta have something good in there if you're a fan of Jujutsu Kaisen so part of me is thinking that as well also could just be that hey I had some something in my life going on or I'm taking a break anyways what better way than to utilize oh something happened in the, one of the most popular manga going right now and that's why I'm taking a break fam so it could be a multitude of different things it could just be hey there's Jujutsu Kaisen fan but also for Shogakugan to allow a comment like that to slide promoting uh you know the competition's work again it just makes me question a couple things again it could just be that yo it may be a great promotional tool it could be both you know two things can be true it could be that yo the author was massively shocked but it doesn't hurt to get a little bit of the conversation going on fly me to the moon bringing up Jujutsu Kaisen and that huge event that I won't spoil of what went down so a lot to think about there but definitely very <laughs> again humorous is the only thing that comes to my mind of like yo dog you put your whole thing like imagine right now it's like yo I can't do videos for the next three weeks because something happened in Jujutsu Kaisen y'all will be like yo you I yo Tim what's going on with you bro Are you good yeah, what, what happened here so yeah but then again it, it, the stuff does happen so that's where I'm at with it you let me know do you think that it's a promotional stunt do you think it's just like you know not legit it's both or maybe yo this was so shocking to this mangaka that they really had to rethink everything about their story to begin with and while we're on the topic of Jujutsu Kaisen another story fell in my lap that I found to be very interesting kind of related to Jujutsu Kaisen because apparently Shibuya City in real life in Japan Shibuya City has banned Halloween gatherings for this year the decision was taken in response to avoid a stampede like disaster like the one occurred in korea last year during halloween it was also speculated that there would have been an even bigger crowd this year due to the ongoing jujutsu kaisen shibuya incident arc which also takes place on halloween in the anime at shibuya pure speculation not part of the official statement but basically in shibuya city you cannot be doing any halloween gatherings or anything like that because they're trying to avoid stampedes and i could totally see it because shibuya you know it is hyped as one of the biggest arcs in shonen you know people have put it up there against like yo it's like marine ford for jujutsu kaisen it's crazy and some fans take things to the limit you know you never know what could happen i mean we've seen what happened a few years back at a travis scott concert so anything is possible uh i, I respect it to a certain degree that they're trying to be safe about things at the end of the day you know anime fans sometimes can be a little bit too passionate somebody might be, think it's funny to hey look i'm sukuna and i'm hurting people so i'd say the safety measures is worthy and, and i guess to a certain degree it's uh valid it, it's valid to do something like that just to make sure that no goofiness goes on and people get hurt at the end of the day because yeah it's the shibuya incident not the real life shibuya incident so shout outs to jujutsu kaisen regardless but sometimes you got to do things like this to protect people because there are some knuckleheads out there even though japan is very low on crime people still will be people and you never know what could come of jujutsu kaisen fandom going nuts especially with what happened in the manga recently a la the story we just talked about before this one anything is possible you know make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to get all notifications moving forward in light of talking about people as we did in the last story going a little bit cray cray director from the sailor moon anime 
and uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena. I'm not really sure I'm, I'm familiar with that one, but I'm definitely familiar with Sailor Moon. But apparently this director's been going through it uh, in the form of targeted harassment. Now, we've seen more recently some publishing companies kind of taking measures to go after, you know, fans, quote unquote. I use fans very loosely because if you're harassing an author, you're not really a fan. You're more so just a leech, a termite, and a bug, and an infestation to a fandom because doing stuff like that, that's not a fan. Man, you're what, what are you doing harassing targeted harassment at that a manga author or a director for that matter because it says here Sailor Moon and Revolutionary Girl Utena director Kunihiko Uhada was the target of a harassment campaign from a woman who claims he plagiarized her work and before we even get forward very very dangerous stuff there because we've seen what happened with the you know Kyoto animation arson stuff rest in peace to all those people that started off of somebody claiming plagiarism so you know in Japan we got to not to generalize all people and whatnot, but we definitely got to take these things very serious. The woman sent threatening messages to Ikuhara, his colleagues, production companies, and other people connected to him. He then contacted police, and they were sent to patrol his home twice a day. Fearing an incident similar to the Kyoto Animation arson attack, I, I did mention it, he took legal action against the woman with a verdict to come in December. Ikuhara stated that he fears incidents like these are only increasing with the ease of action people have to creators with social media and but yeah this one right here i would take that extremely serious i'm glad that homie made all the right took all the right measures and all the right steps because at the end of the day again we did see what happened with the kyoto animation arsonist a lot of people ended up dead and we definitely don't need that i think what's been happening recently where i think that law actually did come into play of pretty much when it comes to like taxes and whatnot you can't no longer go by pseudonames and whatnot so that's only making stuff like this worse and making it possible for more cases like this to happen but yo at the end of the day if you feel like somebody plagiarized your work if somebody stole you know your manuscript so to speak take it up with the courts go file a lawsuit and whatnot um it'll save yourself a lot of time and save your future save you from yourself opposed to trying something else you know stalking and harassing and all of that jazz it's never going to end well for you it's not going to get your manuscript back it's not going to make them stop the project all it is is it's going to get you jammed up so yeah it sucks you know people get copied I, I get copied off of plenty you know i've been copied off of many many a times here on youtube even so it happens but uh, you got to just, you know, take the right measures or whatnot um, to kind of combat it. Or just sometimes you just got to chalk it up to as a part of the game. And I hate it because at the end of the day, that shouldn't be a part of the game. You shouldn't be copied off of or, you know, your ideas stolen, so to speak. But it ultimately happens. And you, again, you got to just go through the right channels to combat it, not do what this person is doing because it's just messed up and wrong and shout outs to again this director that decided yo i'm not gonna stand for this this is not gonna be a case of something bad happening to me i'm going to the authorities so kudos to them and i wish them the best of luck and hopefully this verdict at the very least gives them a, i don't know a, a lifetime ban from being around you know what i'm saying a lifetime restraining order and even more so some surveillance because even if there's an order of protection it doesn't mean that that's going to you know piece of paper is going to stop somebody that's deranged from coming and attacking you know what i mean so again sending best wishes to the director of sailor moon moving forward we got a couple of pieces of news in the world of naruto naruto <laughs> for starters we got naruto and X Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connection Games new DLC delivers songs from the anime and this is very very big for me personally I'm very excited about this it says here Bandai Namco Entertainment America revealed on Monday that the upcoming Naruto X Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections game these names these gaming names I ain't gonna lie why couldn't it just be something very simple Naruto Boruto or just Boruto Storm you know what I mean something simple but I get it they still want to sneak in the word Naruto because Naruto sells a lot more than Boruto. Uh, we'll add theme songs from the Naruto and Naruto Shippuden anime into the game with the nostalgic anime song and item pack 
DLC. The company streamed a trailer, which I did watch the whole trailer, and I'm not gonna lie, it was very, very fun. The DLC songs include Go by Flo, Haruka Kanata by Asian Kung Fu Generation, Bluebird by Ikimono Gakari, a Silhouette by Kanabun, and Kaze by Yamazaru. And I'll be honest with you, well, let me just finish reading it. The DLC will be available on all platforms as well as part of the limited time Steam exclusive sound ultimate bundle will include the full game, several exclusive costumes, and season pass of five characters. The game will launch for PS5, PS4, Switch, Xbox One, XS, and PC via Steam November 17th, and it'll have 124 characters from previous games. All of that good stuff. I am 100% on board for this. I remember there was something like this that was supposed to happen for, or it did happen, for J Star's Victory Versus, where they added in some of the songs from you know the anime and whatnot into the game for like an exclusive edition, and I think that this very very big for even if it's just those five songs alone, most people are gonna have those five songs on rotation. Like this this is something that it almost makes you feel like you're playing. You know how with the anime, especially like it'll be like the first episode of an anime where the theme songs start playing and whatnot. I feel like this will make you give a little bit more of that immersion into the actual game where yeah where if i'm playing the game and i hear like yo that's gonna get me fired up to start doing all sorts of juice so you dig hearing yo just talking about it is getting me hyped this is DLC worth buying. I am absolutely getting it. Again, how do you get this bad boy? Let's see. Hold on. The DLC will be available as part of the limited. Oh, it'll also be a Steam exclusive. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting this DLC 100%. I wish it would come in, but still it's going to be the Nostalgic Anime Song and Item Pack DLC. Definitely getting that. It's definitely worth it. As long as it's not too crazy. Like if they try to charge like 10, 20 bucks for this, I don't know if I'm going. But if it's like, I don't know, 4.99 or something, I think I'd, I'd go for it because, yo, having them song. I mean, I could easily play them off my phone and mute the TV, but it just seems more easy. And this is a win, especially considering like we forget that Storm Connections is not only, you know, a, a new game with Baryama mode and Kashin Koji and all of that cool stuff that's going to be in it. But it's also giving you a collection of all of the older games as well so you're going to be able to experience some of the older stuff and have the cool music to go along with it i feel like this is just epic epic win all around and a great utilization of those songs that we know and love from the naruto series i'm, I'm here for it baby let's go but also in naruto related news apparently the creator of naruto was celebrating kurama in a cute new sketch if there's one thing naruto fans love it is the attention from masashi kishimoto who never gives us any attention anymore <laughs> except like <laughs> the occasional oh yo here's a Here's a drawing or here's a quick chapter whatnot, but I'm going back into being the ghost of allegedly making Boruto. Yeah. The series creator has been in and out of retirement since the main Naruto series closed, but he's been busy as of late. With Boruto ending its second half, the Naruto IP has a lot on its hands, and Kishimoto is overseeing it all, allegedly. And now the artist has wound up fans with a special tribute to the nine-tailed fox, and it's just a drawing of Naruto with Kurama. Cute little drawing, but it's always dope to see that Kishimoto hasn't completely abandoned everything. Like, considering the Boruto manga never says written by Kishimoto it says like I think supervised or something so it's always a question of how involved Kishimoto is at the very least we know it looks like they won't let him walk away and he probably won't let himself walk away completely because we just got the Minato one shot that was absolutely golden uh fairly recent he's still you know he got the itch and I think 100% one day whether it be after Boruto or something Masashi Kishimoto will return with a full-blown like no this is me I'm drawing this. Probably it'll be some sort of Naruto sequel to Boruto whenever he's ready. And it'll probably be, it will never be weekly. I, I'd, I'd imagine majority of veterans are recognizing that when it comes to being a weekly serialization type of thing, not only is it not worth it, if you already have a massive hit that is making you money, chances are one is going to be hard to get another serialization you're not going to be able to get right into the, the magazine immediately two it's hard to see success again just because you had success with one thing we've seen it with 
Kishimoto, what we've seen when he tried to come with Samurai 8 and it wasn't hitting. Not everybody can have back to back hits. So it's always better, in my opinion, if you are going to come back. If Kishimoto did come back after Boruto, he clearly hasn't left. He's clearly still around and still loving this franchise or whatnot. It would probably be a quarterly or at the very most, maybe monthly release and maybe like Shonen Jump Plus or something. Or it'll be, again, along the, the lines of Samurai 8 where he's not doing all of the drawing he's doing maybe writing the story and making storyboards and that's it and i'd totally be fine with that like yeah do the storyboards and write what's happening and move it along we're okay with that that'd be great so we'll see but either way at least it's good to know kishimoto's still around he's still drawing he still loves Naruto, clearly. Or they're forcing him, one or the other. Moving forward, in case you've been living under a rock or you missed it, we reported earlier in the week that there is a new Dragon Ball anime coming. Well, we initially talked about the rumors and leaks. Allegedly, it was supposed to be initially called Dragon Ball Magic. Later on, we got a trailer and a whole bunch of information on the upcoming Dragon Ball anime that is releasing next fall, 2024, Dragon Ball Daima. Let's read what we got here. Toy Animation announces new Dragon Ball Daima anime. Toy Animation announced during its Dragon Ball panel at New York Comic Con on Thursday that there will be a new anime in the franchise titled Dragon Ball Daima in 2024 fall. Series creator Akira Toriyama is deeply involved beyond his usual capacity. <laughs> they love to, they know that it winds up fans. It gets fans like, oh my god, really? When you hear that the original creator is involved, in, especially in a capacity like this. So they make sure to squeeze in like, yo, we want to let y'all know like, Toriyama bled for this project. Homie was bleeding all over the papers to make this thing a reality, okay? He penned entirely new episodes for the storyline. In the series, Goku, Vegeta, Bulma, and the other characters throughout the series become younger than usual. However, this is different from similar plotline in GT's anime in which Goku reverts back into a kid after the end of the original series. Although the title Daima does not mean anything, the kanji could be interpreted as evil in English. So we're watching Dragon Ball Evil? Okay. <laughs> or Dragon Ball E. Oh my god, it's it's replacing the evolution. If they decide to call it Dragon Ball Evil, that would be freaking hilarious. And DBE, but taking out the evolution. Uh, of course, we'll get more info. But on top of that, we got a comment from Akira Toriyama. This is something that is a little bit more new. I haven't talked about this one yet. We got a full-blown statement from Akira Toriyama regarding Dragon Ball Daima. Let's read. Hello, I am Akira Toriyama. And I'm paid out the wazoo, motherfucker! No, I'm playing. I'm currently working on a new Dragon Ball. The title is Dragon Ball Daima. Daima is a made-up term, which is Japanese characters would be blank, or in English would be something like evil. So it's literally DBE, D Dragon Ball Evil. I wonder if they're going to roll with that title, or they're just going to go with Daima. Like, Daima makes it... Considering Dragon Ball, they tried to make it, you know, as diverse as possible and as accessible as possible. And like, for example, with Super, it was initially Dragon Ball Cho in Japanese, but everywhere else is Dragon Ball Super. More than likely, there's a possibility, not more than likely, but there's a possibility that they could go with the English version being Dragon Ball Evil. Although, again, I don't know how well that sits. Like, especially like a hardcore religious household, for example. Would they really allow their kiddos to watch? Because this is going to attract kiddos. Dragon Ball Evil. So, you got to just keep that in mind. Due to a conspiracy, Goku and his friends are turned small. In order to fix things, they'll head off to a new world. It's a grand adventure with intense action and an unknown and mysterious world. Since Goku has to make up for his petite size, he uses his power pole to fight. Something not seen in a long time. I came up with the story and settings as well as a lot of the designs. I'm actually putting a lot more into this than usual. They made him say that so that people don't feel as GT-esque about it. It's like, no, no, no. No, it's not GT. Remember, Toriyama didn't do GT. He just drew Super Saiyan 4. He, it was Toei that did GT. No, they're making it like, nah, Toriyama, this is his, you know what I'm saying, his Magna Carta, so to speak. That's, that's what they're trying to do. Things will unfold that will close in on the mysteries of the Dragon Ball world. Hope you all enjoy these different from usual battles that are cute and powerful. Toriyama signing out. The check has already been cleared. <laughs> And as I've said on many different platforms, I'm here for it. I'm ready for Dragon Ball to have a new, you know, story or whatnot. I do believe that this is not going to really focus in on Super. I'm hearing murmurings that this might take place after Z, 
but before Super, which would basically take place about somewhere before six months after Majin Buu, because Super technically starts with the Battle of Gods arc, Battle of Gods movie, where Beerus wakes up six months after the Buu thing, so this would have to be like, for example, three months after Buu, or five months after Buu, anywhere but six months, because that's when Beerus wakes up, so there's a possibility it could take place then, it could also take place after and just again kind of try its best to ignore stuff from super but considering the evil villain is looking at a lot of majin buu stuff on the screen chances are it might take place prior to super even beginning which would easily you know write out having to talk about beerus and all of them which really sucks because at the end there it's also going to feel like so this is a powered down version and there can't really be no new transformations because then if it never gets expressed or whatnot then it wouldn't make no sense for super so a lot of things to think about, a lot of variables, no Ultra Instinct, no Ultra Ego, uh, but we'll see, I guess. Either way, I'm still excited for it, and I think it's going to be fun, which is what Dragon Ball started out with. I recently rewatched Battle of Gods in theaters for the 10th anniversary showing, and that's what it reminded me of again. Fun. I, I love Dragon Ball and fun because that's where it all started. It was supposed to be fun. Eventually, it evolved into this, you know, like, oh, this is the grandfather master of Shonen, but it started off as fun, and Dragon Ball Daima looks like... Fun. Moving forward, never thought I'd say this, but I am very excited about this bill, and I hope this bill gets passed. And you're probably like, what are you talking about bills and law? What are we doing here on Forever News? Well, according to this article, it says there is a U.S. bill that is seeking to forbid AI replicated voices and appearances without consent. So it seems as though uh, legislation is trying to play quick catch up with AI opposed to like legislation when it comes to social media they're still trying to figure things out and that's that social media has been a very big thing for at least a decade plus now people have been on twitter facebook and all sorts of stuff and legislation is still trying to figure out how to regulate stuff however with this one i hope that this happens and it happens a lot sooner than later i hope it doesn't become a bill that they got to keep on reintroducing over and over because ai needs regulation immediately we need regulation immediately ai is a dangerous tool yes it can be utilized for many many different things like i even look at outside of just like vocal ai replication but like storytelling and whatnot i think that ai is really a dope tool for making storyboards for people that can't really draw like make the storyboards and give it to the actual artist so he has an idea of your vision you can get a really close you know extraction of your vision using these ai tools so ai can be used for good but there's a lot of bad and if we don't have legislation if we don't have some type of regulations it'll only be spread worse and bad things can happen we're already hearing you know uh, murmurings of scammers are utilizing ai voice recreation to get money out of people via pretending to be relatives like there's a lot of bad bad stuff happening of course you know with, with the music they're replicating you know you could have eminem and drake on a song that never that song never would have happened but there's the ai replication and whatnot so a lot of things with ai that i don't think is right like you know I, i'm an artist myself and if i heard somebody that i did not want having a verse of me just hey i got an ai replication of tim on, on, on the record i would feel a certain way but because laws aren't passed there's not so much as you can do other than you know trying to hit with a copyright strike and say you're invading my intellectual property so it's a very slippery slope if you have legislation if you have some sort of bill that prevents this or makes at the very least the legality a little bit stronger on yo you cannot just use people's likeness you cannot use their vocals you cannot use people's stuff without their consent it will make people think twice it says here united states senators chris coons marcia blackburn amy klobuker and tom tillis introduced the draft of a new proposed bill on thursday named the nurture originals foster art and keep entertainment safe no fakes act i like it with a little bit lengthy but i like it and that's what she said which aims to prohibit the use of individuals digitally replicated voices and likenesses or appearances without their consent the bill proposes that those who create or share a replication of an individual for performance in an audio visual or sound recording without that individual's consent would be liable for damages caused by the replication the draft bill stated that there will be ex 
exclusions for uses of the replication for First Amendment protected works, including sports broadcasts, documentaries, biographical works, or for purposes of comment, criticism, or parody, among others. So I guess even then that's still a slippery slope because, okay, if I'm utilizing this to recreate somebody's voice, but I'm doing it as a parody, what about the people that they don't know that it's a parody and they think that that's the original? And I guess to a certain degree, or even with the criticisms and whatnot, it's a slippery slope. And I don't want to say I understand because especially the Japanese corporations, they usually abuse the living crap out of copyright. Like, no, you're infringing or no, you're, you're, this isn't worthy of it. It's just criticism or whatnot. So I understand both sides of it. But bottom line, regardless of what there needs to be regulation. And even if for now it excludes some of these things, it still would be good and beneficial overall to have people think twice before utilizing AI to replicate somebody else's voice or likeness in general. Audiovisual content using AI replicator or synthesized voices or appearances of famous performers have been proliferated on platforms such as YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook in recent years, but have become especially prevalent in the past year with many designed to emulate an actor's specific performance of a character Voice actors such as Allegra Clark, Erica Lindbeck, and Richard Epcar, among many others, have vocally opposed such replications done against their consent. The draft references two recent high-profile incidents, one where an AI-generated fake collaboration song between Drake and The Weeknd went viral in April before being taken off streaming services, and one where Tom Hanks warned fans about a fake AI version of him in a dental commercial created without his consent earlier this month. Yo, that's wild. The dentist is like, yo, we're doing Tom Hanks, bro. We're doing it. Sony Music Entertainment launched a new audiobook app named Yomi Vito Plus in March earlier this year. The app features classic works of Japanese literature read by synthesized voices of three voice actors replicated with AI technology from the company CoFont, including the replicated voice of the late voice actor Kenji Utsumi, who passed away in 2013. In the United States, part of the reason for recent strikes from the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of TV and Radio Artists Labor Union, is to ask for protection against the limitation on those industries use of ai sag after released a statement on thursday praising the proposed bill stating sag after looks forward to working with congress to finalize and pass this historic legislation and i for one have to say i'm here for it don't get me wrong i am also always here i want to see people being able to because it definitely is a benefit and it definitely does help um artists around like yo imagine if you could just right now boom i'm gonna make an eminem verse and put it on my my song and put that out there of course it would help but it's also not fair to eminem because he never you know agreed to it so i i see the both angles of it it could save a lot of people and get a lot of people in positions utilizing ai but that's not the right way to go about it and also you're gonna piss a lot of people off you're gonna make a lot of people not want to work with you not only eminem's not gonna want to work with you but everybody that rocks with eminem and don't want to get on eminem's bad side is also going to say sorry i can't work with you what you did making that eminem replicated voice yeah the big guy don't like it we can't rock with you so think twice before you do stuff like that musicians likewise with maybe mangaka you think you could you know replicate i don't know kishimoto's art style of some sorts and you're gonna like just think about if it was you before you make the decision on using ai for whatever you're trying to create and overall again i am in support of this bill regulate ai before skynet takes over and we're all doomed all right i just wanted to throw something in for a dramatic effect and let's get to the next story shall we yeah go to timroosevelt.com link in the description below check out my music buy my albums you can pre-order the vinyl for the rise of tim roosevelt and you can pre-order my upcoming ep heroes yeah heroes comes with an exclusive comic for you just want to throw that in there pricing ain't bad either next story this one also got me a little bit upset i'm not gonna lie i'm starting to get upset where they're trying to completely remove physical media as i you know march and as i continue to scream yo physical media needs to make a return a lot of the way a lot of companies a lot of especially smaller creators or smaller companies would make their bread and butter is by physical media physical distribution the digital landscape unfortunately devalues everything before you could easily and readily go to you know your internet and download a song or stream a song or whatnot you had to go to the store and get music i remember just a quick story time it was 2006 i was a huge fan of that record ballin we fly high no lie i was a massive fan of that record i know i know you're like yo for that whoa 
Yes, I loved that record at that time in 2006. And unfortunately, I didn't have good internet. Or, well, maybe fortunately for Dipset and Jim Jones. I didn't have good internet. So you know what I had to do to get that song? I had to go to my local Best Buy and go buy the album. Go buy the CD. And I did. And I bought it. And I enjoyed the living crap out of that song. And I discovered a whole bunch of music on that album as well that I enjoyed at the time. However, now, at the click of a button... You couldn't get that album. At the click of a button, you can go stream a show. Like, you had to go back in the days, hey, I want to watch Dragon Ball Z. I have to go buy the Orange Bricks. So I got to go buy when they put out the Blu-rays. Now, I have Dragon Ball Z on my screen without a physical thing. So there's a gift and a curse to it. But ultimately, a lot of the revenue that these companies made to continue bringing you more product was via physical. And it sounds like they're really, not only music has been put to a screeching halt on physical sales. CDs don't sell like they used to vinyls is making a return so that's kind of dope but ultimately physical media is being pushed more in, in favor of streaming which on a side note streaming is a not a great investment i don't see other than maybe privatized funding where there's logic in streaming services like for example spotify and all these big companies and I, i'm just going off on a tangent for a split second but spotify and all these other streaming companies they lose billions and billions and billions of dollars every single year like all the revenue that they make doesn't come close to making a gain for them they it's a loss for them so i don't understand other than you're screwing over mad artists with your the existence of streaming what is the purpose in this if anything let's go back to and maybe you don't want to do maybe cds you just feel like it's such an outdated and antiquated formula cds and dvds and blu-rays or whatnot flash drives i'm gonna continue to scream flash drives is the way sell media on flash drives people can you know use them for other purposes or you know hey if you want to think from a capitalistic approach some people might accidentally delete shit off the flash drive so they'll have to go rebuy the movie hey repurposing them or whatnot but i get all of that and i know i gave a whole big rant in the middle of forever news but i had to because apparently best buy and i'm super late to saying the story I, <laughs> my fault guys best buy announces the end of blu-ray discs and dvd sales and this just crushes my heart electronic retailer best buy revealed on friday it is ending sales of dvds and blu-rays both in store and online early 2024 citing changing media consumption models sales will be discontinued in the new year the outlet will continue the sale of video games however dvd and blu-ray discs have been gradually shrinking over the years according to the data from the trade association deg the digital entertainment group u.s physical media revenue for the first half of 2022 three dropped to us 750 million dollars from 1.05 billion dollars for the same period 2022 leading dvd distributor ingram entertainment also announced its exit from the market into the new year the announcement leaves walmart amazon and target as the remaining top retailers for physical media and the u.s market and i think it was 2018 where i want to say it was best buy that was the first to announce we are done selling cds it was the end of CD sales at Best Buy, and now they're getting rid of, and it makes me think, well, what the hell are you going to sell if y'all getting rid of movies and D? I mean, I guess y'all are going to go hardcore like electronics and cameras and more gaming related stuff, but I'm, I'm disgusted by this. I can't believe this. Like, I used to, back in the days, one of my, my joys, man, I'm not going to lie, one of my joys and pleasures when I was younger was I used to love going to, um, and this was not only this store, but even younger, like just, I always appreciated going to a physical brick and mortar store and buying dvds like when i was younger you know eight nine ten i would go to my local i think it was called sam goody it was at a mall it was a, a you know video dvd well dvd was just starting but it was like vhs and whatnot and i would buy and i would have the time of my life going to buy dragon ball z vhs tapes then as i got older uh you know and i moved to the midwest and i wasn't in the big city no more going to best buy to get at the time before even the orange bricks was a thing get singular dvds get you know the broly movie on dvd and all sorts of stuff that was one of my pride and joys of my life when i was younger so to see that completely go away it makes me quite like yo what about if one day the streaming era comes to an end what about if they realize and recognize that it's not which it isn't a model that can be sustained like you're losing billions of dollars a year what happens then do they decide to bring a new form of physical media 
Like something's got to give, and for the people that do have a lot of physical media, you're gonna win when a cr an inevitable crash of streaming happens, and it's like, uh oh, what do I do now? There's no streaming really, or streaming is astronomically expensive. You're gonna have to go back to buying shit physically. You know what I mean? Or piracy, but then you already know they got piracy locked down. But this is a bad, sad day uh, for physical media in general is another loss you know we've seen it throughout the years whether it be walden books closing down another physical brick and mortar store for books closed down when we saw the end of cds back in like 2017 2018 being sold at stores and now dvds and blu-rays because if best buy is going this route best to believe a lot of stores are going to follow suit i mean i'm starting to notice my local walmarts their dvd and blu-ray section for anime is starting to shrink as well i just went literally yesterday to my local walmart and even at my local walmart the shelf was basically dragon ball i've seen attack on titan and a few others but i'm used to when i go to walmart they have like a nice big amount of anime especially over the last few years you would get a wide variety of a selection anywhere from all of like my hero some classic movies like you would just have a, an abundance of anime releases now you go to walmart and it looked dry and that is another writing on the wall that they are probably, and maybe this is a behind the scenes decision that has been made by a lot of these conglomerates that moving forward into the next few years with Netflix and all of these big streaming giants battling it out, physical media is not going to be a priority for a lot of people. In fact, even now, most people do not look at going to buy physical media as like a big deal. For me, I still bring me to Walmart, drop me anywhere and just put me in the movie section, put me in the DVD and Blu-ray section, put me in the CD and the vinyl section. I love that stuff. And I think there's a lot of people that feel like me as well. Let me know if you're watching this segment right now, if you got through this whole segment tell me if you're still a person that buys dvds blu-rays cds vinyls i just bought well let's see i bought the scissor album shout outs to scissor and tde i bought that on vinyl i bought the taylor swift album yeah i bought with them taylor swift too i got kendrick lamar what else i have there i got michael like i, I buy vinyl still bro i still buy movies all the time it's i don't know man it, it's depressing to see but yeah, the end of an era of physical media when it comes to uh, Blu-rays and DVDs at the very least in Best Buy. And that's just probably the catalyst moving forward. And I don't know, in the next five to ten years, are we even going to have physical uh, brick and mortar stores? Or is everything going to be designed behind Amazon or Walmarts and thrift stores? <laughs> and it's reasons like this next story why you should not be so completely i guess um how can you say this reliant on streaming especially when it comes to your favorite shows and favorite movies because not only do they you know take them off of the platforms after their license expire or whatnot or just in general when the giant wants to make a play uh also prices go up and little by little the streaming services are making it that you're gonna have to make a choice like yeah now you can afford netflix and hbo max and all these other places or i think it's just called max now but here soon it's probably not gonna be plausible here soon you're probably gonna have to make a choice do you want netflix or hbo you can't have them both because it says here netflix raises price on some plans in the u.s uk and france and they just raised the prices they literally just did this and i think a bunch of services have done the same netflix announced on tuesday that it is increasing the price of its premium subscription plan in the united states united kingdom and france with the plan increasing from 19.99 to 22.99 in the united states netflix is also increasing the price of its ad-free basic subscription plan in the United States from $9.99 to $11.99, though that plan is no longer being offered to new subscribers in the US, UK, and Canada. The UK prices are now $4.99, $7.99, $10.99, and $17.99 for the basic with ads, basic without ads, standard, and premium subscription plans. The French prices are now $5.99, $10.99, $13.49, $19.99 and $19.99 for the basic, basic without ads, standard, and premium subscription the basic with ads and standard plan prices in both countries are unchanged netflix recently brought its new password sharing policy to multiple other markets including united states yeah netflix has been doing the most because they know they'll have that one show that'll get everybody to come back or they have select shows to attack 
different markets like for example the anime and manga fan they won big with one piece because a lot of people subscribe back to netflix just to watch the one piece live action off of word of mouth um a lot of people sign back on when they did uh who cloned tyrone so they always have like that one show or that one movie that'll get you back in and then you just kind of get complacent and you forget to cancel but at some given point i think the people are gonna have to speak with their wallets and stop subscribing to these platforms if they're going to keep on increasing the prices like we're at 22.99 if it, it keeps increasing pricing at this rate within the next five to ten years what are we going to be paying we'll be like up to like 50 something dollars on netflix alone and it's just getting astronomical inflation is killing everybody's pockets the lack of wage increases is killing everybody's pockets and these streaming services are not giving a crap they're not budging they're going up they're doubling down on destroying our pockets and again when it's getting even worse of the fact that physical media now blu-rays and dvds are no longer available at best buy starting 2024 you ain't gonna be able to get so now you're gonna be even more reliant on netflix and even more so apt to paying that $22.99 and it's it's getting ridiculous people stay alert look at what's happening pay attention buy a physical media don't rely on the streaming services don't rely on all of them because at the end of the day they're just going a very very dark route where you're not going to have anything to do and you're going to be forced to pay for these things because you're going to be like well damn do i go on amazon and buy all these dvds assuming amazon is still slinging dvds and blu-rays or do i just click this button and pay this $22.99 and then it's going to be $32.99 42.99, 52.99. It's gonna keep on getting worse. I'd imagine the same happened with cable. I'm imagining cable didn't start off immediately off rip, ripping everyone's pockets to shreds. Although cable was pricey even back in the day. But let me know your take on Netflix continuing to raise prices. And also, where do you see the breaking point of people saying no more? When you have physical brick and mortar stores saying, well, we're not selling the physical no more. Where do people go? It looks like the best bet is go on Amazon or any of these other sites and buy as much physical media as you can and screw the uh, streaming services if they're not going to budge on all these price hikes. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't they say that they wasn't going to increase the price anymore this year? That's crazy. They lied. But yeah, Netflix raises price on some plans in the US, UK, and France. Moving forward, big story with controversy surrounding Terra Strong. If you don't know who Terra Strong is, you never heard of Timmy is an average kid and no one understands. Because she's the voice of Timmy and Fairly Odd Parents. She was the voice of Batgirl and Batman the Animated Series. She's pretty notable. I think she was Bubbles and Powerpuff Girls. Well, according to this, it says voice actor Terra Strong recast it for upcoming project amidst controversy. Voice actor Terra Strong has been recast for a new animated project amid a recent controversy over some of Strong's recent statements on social media. Strong was spotted on X, formerly known as Twitter, with activity that sparked a controversy among fans around the Israeli-Palestine conflict. And amidst this controversy, it has been announced that one animated project she was formerly attached to will be recasting her role. The independent animated project Boxtown announced on social media they will be moving ahead with open auditions to refill the role once held by strong bill the orphan following her debut in promotional materials boxtown original concept was such a success with fans that it's now currently in the works with a partly crowdfunded animated project from bandit mill studios and it featured strong in the lead role alongside alex hertz but as the official twitter account for boxtown has announced they will be moving forward without strong in the cast and will start open audition soon hello all just wanted to offer a quick update on boxtown we will be recasting the role of bill previously played by tara strong we'll have more info soon on open Open auditions thanks for understanding and we reorient the figure and figure out the next steps are you asking i'm sure hey why was she recasted what did she do what happened well it says here boxtown has not announced why strong has been recasted but it is likely due to strong's recent social media controversy strong herself responded to the tweet and revealed that this is how she found out she was recasted just found out on twitter this is what happens when you help fans get shows made i guess strong began Fired for being Jewish. Glad I helped you get your Kickstarter money. Please lose my email address and pray for my family in Israel and in Gaza. Boxtown is now in the works and Bandit Mill Studios teased the animated project as such on its Indigo page. Set in a fictional crime, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I could read it. So I don't know exactly what she was doing prior to this because this article doesn't say what she said that led to them firing her and then her coming out with she's fired for being 
Jewish, you know, as she is proclaiming. I don't, I'm not a fan of if indeed it's true that essentially one of the reasons they just had her on was, hey, you know, you get Tara Strong on board, you get a big, you know, pro prolific voice actress like that on board of your project, chances are fans are going to be more open, like, hells yeah, I'll, I'll throw in the money. I want a, a cartoon or an animated series with Tara Strong to be a hit or whatnot. So if they just got her on board and didn't give her any reasons other than she's openly Jewish and the whole stuff that's going on with Israel and Palestine right now is like, if that's the reason, just because she's openly Jewish and you fired her after you got, you know, crowdfunded all this money, Damn, you a cold, cold motherfucker. I just gotta say right now, that's some cold, cold stuff. I don't see anywhere of why she would say that she was fired for being Jewish. I mean, even if she put like, pray for Israel or some shit like that. If that was the main reason why they fired her, if she said something in that ballpark, then there's a slippery slope there. Again, I don't have all the details, so I don't want to make a judgment one way or another, but I did want to bring it to you for anybody that maybe you contributed it to this box town situation of like, you know, you pledged some money or you were behind it with Tara Strong. Because of this incident, she will no longer be a part of the cast. And yeah, it's a, it's a slippery slope. Let me know how you guys feel about this. And if you do know all of the details as to if there's something that's being left out, why she was fired, hit me up and drop a comment telling me why but it is crazy indeed if they you know hired her got the money for f crowdfunding didn't say why but just fired her or if they fired her be like yo you saying you jewish fam you gotta go that's pretty crazy moving forward we spoke about it in the last episode of forever news and now we have an update on the first look at yu yu haka shows live action in costume a shot from a scene it says here netflix is yu yu hawk show live action series first look released the yu hawk show is coming to netflix later this year with a live action adaptation of its own and netflix shared the first look at the new series in action following the massive success of one piece this summer netflix will be following up with a new live action on yoshihiro tagashi's classic shonen jump manga the Hakka Show anime recently celebrated its 30th anniversary, which that would have been great for an anime remake, I'm just saying. And it was around that time that a new live action production was announced to be in the works in a partnership between Shueisha, Toho, Robot, and Netflix. The Yu Yu Hakka Show live action series will be one of the many projects Netflix will be sharing a new look at during the upcoming Geeked Week 2023, announced November 9th through the 12th. And the trailer for the event actually shared the first real look at the series in motion. While there have been previous teasers of the cast for promotional posters, this is the first look at its series lead takumi kitamura as yusuke urameshi it's not much but we'll get an update soon and it's basically of yusuke and he's standing in front of what looks like paramedics so maybe this is the opening scene where yusuke is hit by a car and maybe he's talking because he's looking directly at the camera and if this is a shot from a scene maybe he's actually talking to the camera breaking the fourth wall so to speak when he dies because initially remember is like the narrator saying this is 14 year old Yusuke Urameshi and he's the main protagonist of the story but oddly enough he's dead so maybe this is a scene from right after the car accident because again it looks like potentially paramedics behind I might be totally off on that but it looks like that's paramedics and maybe that's like the big car accident and i ain't gonna lie you can't get too much from this other than it's like okay well let, let's see what happens i can't really judge much off of this i mean even if it was professionally done photos or whatnot or in general i after what happened with the one piece live action where initially the shots and you know the trailers and all that was kind of bad and it had me thinking like oh it's about to be a shit sandwich and it turned out to be decent until i see yu yu haka show one way or another unless it's really bad and they got like use k wearing i don't know a pink kimono for the entire show i'm not gonna judge it until i actually see the thing because looking at this shot right now i don't know what i'm really looking at other than it's a dude that's dressed like use k with like a greaser haircut giving you the the rocks people's eyebrow you know what i'm saying so uh when we see more i will let you know but for starters this is the first look at the yu yu haka show live action use k in costume and it looks all right i guess but we'll see more as things develop moving forward my hero academia fans apparently some people were able to see the latest ova that dropped in theaters fairly recently it says here my hero academia ua heroes battle ova is a well animated trading card game commercial because yes i've seen my hero academia cards at some of my local card shops fairly recently and for them to do this i'd imagine it's probably a push then for the my hero card game at new york comic-con 2023 crunchyroll premiered the latest my hero academia oav 
My Hero UA Heroes Battle. Convention attendees were the first in the world to lay eyes on the OVA. Shown dubbed in English, the story revolves around an exclusive My Hero card game. And if I had to sum up the OVA in a single statement, this is the Anime News Network reviewer saying this, by the way, not me. It would be something along the lines of, wow, that was a really long and well-animated commercial. The setup was pretty standard, even though the story's chronological placement is confusing. Previous My Hero Academia OVA episodes came out around the time they would have canonically happened alongside the anime, but there's no way this episode could have taken place during season six given the heavy subject matter that is being tackled right now instead the ova takes place during season five the general just is that class 1a feels listless during the winter season because they're stuck in their dorms unable to go out visit family or engage in any fun activities due to the league of villains targeting them good boy medio in his classic over-the-top fashion introduces a new card game being developed by his up underclassmen they decide to play and test out the game in order to pass time as an audience member, it isn't clear how the game works. It feels like watching the early seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh! where there weren't really any rules and events just happen. There's a digital interface where the characters can put down the cards that are based on each other and other well-known heroes. Putting down a card will end up generating a holographic avatar that does combat with your opponent's cards. It's both incredibly straightforward and vaguely complicated at the same time because the OVA doesn't really make it clear if the digital avatars are fighting by command or if there's an AI controlling the avatars based on the character's known fighting styles. I would have liked if they actually explained how the real world card game works but at the very least it's simple fun that i think most my hero academia fans should be able to enjoy the avatars got some laughs out of me thanks to its art style the avatar looks almost exactly like their real world counterparts except for the eyes which are drawn in a large exaggerated way this feels right at home for some of the more cutesy characters but when you put those eyes on characters like bakugo or todoroki it's a riot and there's more to this review if you want to check it out it's over on anime news network but in a nutshell it sounds like the upcoming my hero academia ova that was recently released in japan probably isn't all that and probably was made to push the my hero card game that is out now and i've looked at the cards i never actually picked up any because the only tcg i'm mildly invested in right now is the one piece card game which is pretty awesome but i wouldn't be surprised if one piece follows soon and has like a big ova where they're collecting these bounty cards or something and it ties into the one piece card game because it's pretty awesome but yeah, I don't think I'll be rushing to watch this My Hero OVA anytime soon if it's anything like what this Anime News Network review said. Moving forward, I thought I'd give you guys a quick update on the murmurings of what's happening in the manga world because apparently on Manga Plus, the number two most read manga as of the recording of this episode is Kagurabachi. <laughs> Yo, the new manga from Weekly Shonen Jump has now surpassed Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, and everything minus one piece with 928,885 readers again as of the recording of this video only putting it what is it like 70 something thousand readers behind about 75,000 readers behind one piece that is crazy now granted Jujutsu Kaisen didn't have a chapter recently so it could be that it only beat out Jujutsu Kaisen because if Kaisen had a chapter it wouldn't have but it's still insane and definitely a showcase that at the very least Kagurabachi has some type of following over here in the west I mean one could argue that the readership isn't legit because a lot of it was based on memes but we'll see in the next couple of months if it sticks around if it doesn't get cancelled and the readership continues to place it somewhere in the top 10 it could be that this will be the first crazy manga from Japan to blow up in the West off of memes alone. I've never seen this before. Not for a brand new manga. Like I've seen the Sasuke story getting like a lot of people posting about it. Being in the rankings and surpassing Boruto and readership and that being a big deal. I've never saw it for a new franchise but shout outs to Kagurabachi one way or another it's trolling its way to the top then moving forward quickly there's a new trailer for the upcoming season two of invincible and there's also a new promotional image for november 3rd invincible season two i will be there no matter what so if you're interested you could go check it out i ain't gonna lie regardless of what trailer they show unless it's some absolutely crazy oh my god i'll never in a million years support that type of stuff i am watching invincible season two it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be great 
season one was great and yeah hopefully this new trailer if you aren't sold on it does sell you but i mean come on it's invincible dog it's freaking awesome you should check it out next up for fans of the seven deadly sins in particular four nights of the apocalypse now a lot of people including myself have been fairly disappointed recently with the arrival of the seven deadly sins four nights of the apocalypse anime spinoff on this season of anime but it not making its way over to the west a lot of us were under the assumption like oh you know the embargoes of locking it in the netflix jail is done we're gonna get the episodes weekly and yet while the anime is airing in japan we haven't gotten a single episode over here in the west however maybe netflix isn't gonna make us wait that long it says here netflix to stream seven deadly sins four nights of the apocalypse anime soon netflix announced on monday that it will stream the tv anime of nakaba suzuki's the seven deadly sins four nights of the apocalypse a sequel manga netflix did not reveal a specific release date and only list the anime as coming soon the anime premiered in Japan on a newly created anime programming slot on TBS and its 27 affiliates October 8th at 4.30 p.m., roughly 3.30 a.m. EDT. The anime will run for half a year without breaks, so it's going two straight cores. Nice, nice, nice. Now, what the hell does soon mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, soon to me doesn't mean if it came out what that's like a week ago pretty much right so there should be like two episodes out maybe even three as of uh, well no it's about two right now maybe by the time you've seen this there might be three but either way with a couple episodes out what does soon mean soon to me means like maybe this month next month at the latest soon doesn't mean after you know the first three months of the anime being out now we're coming like please don't make people wait if you're gonna make people wait please let it be like okay maybe they're four episodes three or four episodes out in japan and we got the first episode with the sub and dub or something like that i get it that one of the reasons probably why they are apprehensive to release this weekly is because seven deadly sins has been factually known to be a very big binge streamer people have notoriously love to watch the seven deadly sins in bulk whenever there's a season that drops of 12 episodes it is one of the most watched binged anime but come on fam you know the ship has sailed of the netflix jail nobody wants that no more even look what happened with eden zero after season one of the netflix jail it went to crunchyroll and season two it got you know pretty much almost simultaneous release let's not play any games we want it and we want it now i want to have some fun with this thing please drop the four nights of the apocalypse asap like, make soon ASAP, ASAP, you dig? But only time will tell. Either way, at least there's some motion being had. And they're making ways to getting us the Seven Deadly Sins, Four Nights of the Apocalypse anime sooner rather than later. Moving forward, let's talk about more anime that are coming to platforms. Because apparently Crunchyroll to stream Kaiju Number 8, Spice and Wolf, The Unwanted Undead Adventurer. Not to be confused with Undead Unluck. Seven Time Loop, Sengoku Yoko, and more anime. Crunchyroll announced during its New York Comic Con panel on Friday that it will exclusively stream the Kaiju Number no. 8 anime in Japanese with English subtitles and with an English dub in spring 2024. The company unveiled the world premiere trailer for the Bye Bye Earth anime. Crunchyroll also revealed that it will stream the Spice and Wolf Merchant Meets the Wise Wolf. Is that a new Spice and Wolf anime? Is that the original title, full title for it? I thought it was just Spice and Wolf. The unwanted undead adventurer, seven time loop. The villainess enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy. Sengoku Yoko and the foolish angel dances with the devil. Classroom of the Elite season three, as well as my next life as a villainess. All routes lead to doom movie. The anime of Naoya Matsumoto's Kaiju number eight manga will premiere April 2024. And it's good to know out of all of that, the main one that I'm concerned with is okay, Crunchyroll has Kaiju number eight. Nothing to worry about, no Netflix jail or none of that BS. Uh, we're going to probably get it, you know, as it comes out in Japan. And I've been waiting for Kaiju 8 and a lot of other people uh, for a long time. So please, let's get Kaiju number 8 ASAP, you know? You dig? You feel me? Moving forward for all Ultimate Muscle, a.k.a. Kinukuman fans out there. Apparently, Kinukuman by Yude Tamago has announced an indefinite hiatus, which is a strange timing considering it has the reboot anime incoming and weekly Playboy due to Takashi Shimano upcoming knee surgery and hospitalization series will publish a short 
spin-off manga during the break and will inform on the resumption of the series in the future. I'm wondering if the reason for this is because, well, the anime is incoming, sales is going to be up. I can actually afford to go get this knee surgery and not feel like maybe it might be that he, you know, he's living check to check, even though he's putting out this manga. Maybe it hasn't been that popular or whatnot, because again, very strange timing to go get knee surgery as your anime is getting ready to launch. Either that or he's trying to get it done before the anime launches so that he could be very consistent upon launch. I don't know. But yeah, for all the Kanukuman fans that read it, we, I, I, who, who's reading Weekly Playboy? You know what I mean? Like, if you are, what are you doing, dog? You know what I'm saying? Also, why is a muscly manga inside a Playboy mat? Not going to question it, but yeah. Hiatus for Kanukuman if you're interested. <laughs> Next up, we got a couple of pieces of One Piece news. For starters, One Piece anime has recasted Admiral Ryokugyu with Junichi Suwabe. The official Twitter account for the One Piece franchise announced on October 8th that Junichi Suwabe will voice the character Admiral Ryokugyu in the One Piece anime's upcoming 1079th episode this Sunday. Suwabe replaces the late voice actor Keiji Fujiwara, who passed away at the age of 55 after battling cancer in april 2020 suave will voice the character in all future appearances and yeah i think what happened is the voice of that character shortly after the time skip was revealed but we don't see that character until he makes his full-on debut here in that next episode so that's probably why in between the original voice actor you know he passed away so you gotta recast and you gotta do what you gotta do i guess but yeah very unfortunate we never got to see man play the full role then uh just a little bit of an update on apparently the live action of one piece has been so successful that manga sales in the u.s for one piece has gone up one piece volume one the omnibus edition ranked in the u.s top 20 monthly book scan list of september 2023 in fact i've seen a lot more one piece in places like walmart and other places manga wise than i've ever seen like i actually seen those omnibuses alongside like a one piece coloring book and stuff like that in walmart and a lot of that is due to the live action netflix show it actually got people picking up one piece in the u.s top 20 adult graphic novels one piece set a record for the longest time span between volumes on the chart with volume 103 so yeah it's been a hot minute since like one piece was on the charts and more than likely again because of the netflix live action it is charting again so kudos to the live action for providing support for the series and getting sales up there in the west and speaking of the live action netflix adds nearly nine million subscribers in quarter three streamer says ad supported plans up nearly 70 percent from quarter two Netflix subscribers grew by 8.76 million in the third quarter of 2023, totaling 247.15 million by the end of the fiscal period, September 30th. Per letter to shareholders accompanying the quarter three results Wednesday, adoption of our ad plans continued to grow with ad plans membership up almost 70% quarter over quarter and 30 percent of signups in our ads countries are on average to our ad plans with more work to do to scale this business the streamer says it's 6.99 per month ad supported plan continues to support our ads plan growth in the u.s at the same time netflix on wednesday prices of its basic and premium netflix called out several originals that it says boosted subscriber growth in quarter three including the hit live action adaptation of the beloved japanese manga one piece along with the mighty viewership power of usa network drama suits which has been immensely popular on the platform throughout the summer in july netflix reported paid subscribers increased by 5.89 million in quarter two rising to 238.39 million global subscribers up eight percent year over year analysts projected the streamer ga gaining 1.769 million new subscribers in the quarter ended june 30th the period in which netflix began notifying customers in the u.s and other countries that users on their accounts who live outside their households would need to be added as an extra member and yeah it's kind of crazy to say that not only was a live action anime adaptation you know animated live action successful but it was also so big and widely received that it helped to gain millions of subscribers to netflix that is freaking nuts what existence have we been dropped into where a live action is saving an entire platform a live action of an anime you know what i mean like what the hell moving forward quick update on rick and morty rick and morty's dan Harmon reveals if show will po 
fun at Justin Rowland firing. Rick and Morty has made some big changes behind the scenes ahead of Season 7's premiere, and co-creator Dan Harmon has opened up about whether or not the show will ever choose to address those changes in a future episode. Before Rick and Morty Season 7 premiered this past week, Adult Swim announced that they were cutting ties with series co-creator Justin Rowland and recasting his various roles. Rick and Morty Season 7's first episode introduced fans to the new actors behind these roles, but if you didn't know otherwise, it was a rather seamless transition. As Rick and Morty co-creator Dan Harmon explained to the Hollywood a reporter that ease and transition is what the team was going for so that those unaware of the situation with Roland or the changes would still be able to enjoy the new episodes without issue it's also why that when asked whether or not the series would make any meta jokes about the new voice actors Harmon revealed that he doubted that would be the case to play it grown-up style and get back to work even though Rick and Morty is like literally the most vile and you know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing adult about majority of the comedy surrounding Rick and Morty, but okay. Will Rick and Morty address Justin Rowland firing? I doubt it, Harmon began when asked about whether or not the series would address Rowland's exit. Our metric of absolute success in the transition would be if the hypothetical casual viewer who was out of the loop on any behind-the-scenes drama about the show were to keep right on watching and say, this season's better than the other one, or this may be my favorite episode. If that person is able to continue their journey, from the womb to the tomb with Rick and Morty and a furniture-like style stability. That is the best we can do in this particular job. Elaborating further, Harmon also explained that avoiding referencing it would also include meta jokes. I used to do that all the time on Community. If you watch Community, you follow along with Tumblr. You would give him big insight into my various personality disorders and relationships with fans. This, I don't think, is the right way to play it on this one. We want to suck it up and play a grown-up style and get back to work. Again, Rick and Morty is not grown-up style but right on i guess yeah i just don't want any yeah i want to put it past y'all as quick as possible i get it i get it moving forward despite the fact that many of fans have said chainsaw man's manga has fell off uh, according to this chainsaw man's manga has won best manga award at the harvey awards for the third straight year at this point Toski fujimoto's like yeah i'm him the harvey awards which honors outstanding works in comics and sequential art announced the award winners for this year's awards at new york comic-con on friday Toski fujimoto's chainsaw man manga won the award for best manga chainsaw man competed against Wataru Naratani's Cat Plus Gamer, Tatsuki Fujimoto's Goodbye Eddie, Hao Miyazaki's Shuna's Journey, and Spy Family by Tatsuya Endo. I thought Spy Family would have probably taken that. Apple TV's Drops of God, the new internationally co-produced multilingual live action TV series of Tarashi Agi and Shu Okimoto's The Drops of God manga received a nomination in Best Adaptation from Comic Book slash Graphic Novel category. However, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse won the award. This was the third year in a row in which Chainsaw Man and Spy Family garnered nominations, but Chainsaw Man won it. And I'm wondering, what are they judging? Like, are they judging the chapters that come out weekly? Because a lot of fans haven't been very happy with, and maybe critics are different, but the latest stuff of Chainsaw Man hasn't been well received. So it's interesting to see it still getting uh you know awards moving forward demon slayer fans i saw this at new york comic con because i indeed was there apparently they're selling demon slayer crocs demon slayer x crocs collection is on sale now once considered a fashion fox packs crocs have made their comeback from shrek collaborations to goth crocs the shoe brand is thriving in the year 2023 now it seems crocs is ready to bring in new metrics and we have its otaku interest to thank after all demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba is getting its own crocs and we've been given our first look at the line according to Foot Locker, the chain will be exclusively rolling out crocs in a matter of days the shoes will be sold online and in stores promise to show off your favorite anime slayer and yes the crocs will all come with special gibbets the crocs are now available via the crocs website so yeah it has like those little pins my kids love these things i i don't know i don't get them they look like jail shoes to me to be honest with you but salute if you like them they got demon slayer ones as you can see crocs will be adapting its classic clogs for the demon slayer deal tanjiro nezuko inosuke and zenitsu are all up for the collab each shoe is patterned after its respective slayer and they come with custom gibbets shoe charms for instance nezuko comes with a charm of her box while zenitsu's crocs come with complete 
a sword hilt and yeah you can expect them to sell out fast i might get a couple as like collectors and maybe one or two for my kids i don't know it depends on price 70 dollars eh, 70 dollars sounds like a lot moving forward i'm hearing this is confirmed that blue box is getting an anime it looks like another major weekly shonen jump manga is getting an anime next as new listing for apparent blue box anime adaptation has been spotted online fans may have noticed how a more recent era of shonen jump series have started to make their anime adaptation debuts and it seems like the next of the last few hits is coming our way koji Miura's blue box manga originally kicked off its run back in 2021 and has since been a major hit with fans for blending its sports stories with an ever-growing romance between its two leads because i think it's like romance slash sports blue box has kicked off a new era of manga blue box is being teased as one of the franchises shueisha will be highlighting during the jump fest of 2024 convention later this year so if there is a potential anime to be announced that would be the time to do so with the manga having plenty of material for an anime to cover, now is the best time for Blue Box to branch out. And yeah, I totally see it. It's more than time. They don't have a sports series anymore. Haikyuu is done. They need to get this popping because right now Blue Lock is dominating sports. So they need, a, they need to get Blue Box going immediately. Although I got to imagine there's going to be some confusion. Like is Blue Box a spinoff of Blue Lock? Like they're both sports series and they both have Blue and Lock in the name. No, well, Lock's... You get what I mean, no. Moving forward, Initial D fans might get excited about this. Apparently, Fast and the Furious star Sung Kang is going to be directing an Initial D live action movie. It's about cars and drifting and cool things like that. And I believe they had like a drifting, wasn't like uh, Tokyo Drifters, Fast and the Furious had like a movie like that. So that was probably their attempt at doing like an Initial D live action. But yeah, who knows? Maybe it was supposed to be an Initial D movie, Tokyo Drifters. And they were like, it's not going to sell. Let's put Fast and the Furious title on it and throw in some Vin Diesel references but then eventually they were like yo anime's popping we can do it now i'm here for it why not okay people and let's slow it down with the weekly shonen jump all the comments starting with my hero academia's kohei horikoshi while i was drawing toga's arc i discovered that your fingers open when you feebly lay your hand flat from the waist right on cypher academy nisio isen having three novels you want to read at once what a wonderful trilemma Martial Master Asumi Kawada, they removed the size limits in sumo. Hinomaru sumo has become something of the past. Akanebanashi Takamasa Moe, I got a guinea pig. When I smell its tummy, it sometimes smells like pretzels. What? Okie dokie. One Piece Eichiro Oda, lately I cry every time I watch the One Piece anime. The Wano arc is so good. Thank you for the wonderful performances. I've, I've heard some great things. I've seen some great things. Uh, Kill Blue Taratoshi Fujimaki, I went to Spa La Croix and it was a two hour wait for the men's sauna. Do men like baths that much? You've seen it in anime. Apparently they do. <laughs> Mama Yuya by or Mama Yuyu by Yoshihiko Hayashi. I saw Magical Lovely perform their shadow show for New Year's 2022. The first appearance of Kage Yado. Sakamoto Days Yuto Suzuki. When I get wrinkles in my manga paper from using the eraser, it feels like it's instantly trash. Ooh. Uh, Witch Watch Kenta Shinohara. I hadn't missed my high school reunion I was so looking forward to. Sad. I wonder if they'll have another one in 10 years. Maybe, or maybe you missed out, homie. Kagurabachi's Takeru Hokazono. My studio was so messy that my editor couldn't take it anymore and cleaned up for me. I'm so sorry. Well, you're doing goat stuff, so you got yourself a hit. Uh, Blue Box, Koji Miura. It's gotten cooler. I hope it continues like this for a while. Don't come end of year. Two on Ice, Elk Itsumo. I've watched Daisuke Takahashi's Olympic La Strada performance so many times. I'm glad I was able to use it in the series. The Elusive Samurai Yusei Matsui. No matter how many times I learned the reading of Kiyo Hohen compliments and criticisms, I forget it. The phrase must be cursed. Mission Yozakura family, Hitsuji Gandaira. I start to feel like my coloring style is stabilizing, but then it's not. This is hard. Undead Unlucks Yoshifumi Tezuka. The anime is amazing. I have another thing to look forward to every week. Andy is so cool and Fuko is cute. I'm really digging the Undead Unluck anime. I ain't gonna cap. Miraboko Shuhei Miyazaki. It's gotten cooler, but I'm still wearing shorts. October is for shorts. Yo, mad side note. Imagine the author of Miraboko Miyazaki is related to the Miyazaki. Just a random one. Uwe's Exorcist Kota Kawaii. I got some barley tea at the convenience store. Summer is over, but barley tea brings it back. Bini Ichinosi Family Deadly Sins by Tizen 5. It's gotten a lot more full, like please enjoy chapter 45. And then we close out with Icehead Gil Ikuo Hachia, which I'm imagining this is going to get canceled. Is at the bottom again. The MBTI test is a lot of fun. I ask around and everyone has a rare personality type. 
Too many advocates. And yeah, people, that was the weekly show to jump all the comments. But let's close this episode off with the top 50 best-selling manga of the week. Courtesy of Joe's underscore K. And let's go with places 50 through 41 to start off. Let's go to 48. Ron Komonohashi, The Range Detective, Volume 12. In five days, did 14.3K. That's the latest work from the creator of Hitman Reborn, Akira Mano. Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 22 in 220 days on the charts with 1.584 million with 15K this week. That anime is doing it numbers. Nui no Anmyoji Volume 1, 5 days on sale, 15.1K, not bad. The Ichi no Se Family Deadly Sins in 5 days, 15.5K. Let's see here, the Slime Series Volume 24 in 31 days, 388K, 16K this week. So, so no for Aaron. I am literally like half an episode away from catching up on it. Uh, volume 9 and 8, both on the charts with 387 and 395 total with 16K this week a piece. Uh, let's see more. Okay, so, so, so no for Aaron is getting the back catalog push. Volume 7 on the charts, 430 total. Volume 6 on the charts, 456 total. Undead on Lux, new volume on charts. In five days, 17.8K for volume 18. I'm not sure if that's an increase from the last volumes, but it's not a jump, a major jump for sure. Because like if it was a major jump, it would have been like 60K or 70K or something. So maybe the anime might not do it justice like I thought it would, but there's still time. So who knows? Mystery Tolo Nakari, 31 days, 393. Then Soso No Friere and two more times on the charts for volumes 10 and 5, doing 18 apiece, bringing their total to 352 for 10 and 552 for five and yeah i'm digging so so no fair and but i'm sure it's still many more on the charts yeah places 30 through 21 volume four of so so no fair and 613,000 total uh volume three in a thousand over a thousand days 633,000 volume two 171,000 jeez louise Blue Lock, Volume 26 and 25 Days, 303,000. Big, big ups to Blue Lock. Volume 1 of So So No Free Aaron at Place 22. In total, the first volume is at 745,000 sales with 23K this week. We got places 20 through 11. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen's latest volume, Volume 23 and 97 Days. Is this the latest volume? I feel like maybe another one has already came out. Uh, but in 97 Days, 1.3 million copies with 25 this week. Kinukuman, Volume 83, in 10 days, 57K. That is astronomical, especially the authors like going on hiatus now with the anime coming with The Strange, but salute to the author of Kinukuman. Witch Watch, Volume 13, in 5 days, 31.7. Is it just me or is Witch Watch going up in sales? I feel like Witch Watch is having a little renaissance of popularity. Kudos to Witch Watch. Akane Banashi in 5 days, 34.5K. Not bad for Volume 8. My Dress Up Darling, Volume 12 in 14 days, 203. Oh, we missed a Soso No Freire in Volume at number 13, Volume 11. In 24 days, that's the latest volume, 292K, almost 300K. Now we at top 10, top 10, top 10, top 10. Uh, let's see here. We got Ao Ashi, Volume 33 in 11 days, 140K. Big, big ups to Ao Ashi. We got MF Ghost, which is an initial D spinoff, if I'm not mistaken, Volume 18. In four days, almost 50K. Not bad at all, 48.9. Uh, Martial Magic and Muscles. I'm not sure if that's the final volume or not, but Volume 18 in five days, 51.8. I think those are pretty decent numbers for Marshall, but... Yeah, I, I don't know what happened with Mosh, I'll be honest with you. And I, it's a shame the anime didn't give it like that big boost. Berserk in 10 days, 141.4 with 58.2 this week. Big, huge ups to Berserk and Studio Gaga for continuing the legend of Kentaro Miura. Let's see, number two, Spy Family. Wow, Spy Family coming in at number two, but it's, I mean, being beat by... You know, something in its uh, publishing house. Spy Family Volume 12 in 5 days. 574,000 copies. Insane, insane. And only being beat out by one of the most popular contemporary manga right now. Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 24. Latest volume in 5 days. 671.4K. Topping the charts. Big ups to Jujutsu Kaisen. It's still a Goliath. But yeah, people, that's it for this episode of Forever News. Thanks for watching. I'm Tim, and as always, people, have an awesome day. And remember the golden rule, anime and manga for life, boy. Have an awesome day, peace, and you guys just watched another episode of Forever News.
Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to get all notifications so you get notified whenever I drop new videos on the latest and greatest news of anime and manga. Also, check out The Rise of Tim Roosevelt. Go to timroosevelt.com and pre-order The Rise on vinyl, the extended edition. Also, you can pre-order my new EP incoming called He Rose. Look forward to it all. Thank you so much for the support. Have an awesome one. Thought it would have been, wish it would have been. Acting like I'm fine is getting harder to pretend. I said, thought you would have been, wish you would have been. Maybe I was wrong, it was me all along.